Hey y'all, it's Brian from Dogwood Custom Builds, and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful bread knife from start to finish, doggy style. To start out, I use Katsura Cutlery Steel Blanks. They come in all different shapes and lengths, but I'm using the bread knife in this video. Uh, they send really nice boxes, mosaic centering pins, and then these interlocking pins with each knife. I love the mosaic pin, but I do prefer regular 8th inch steel rods over the interlocking pins. The first step I take when I make any knife is to cover the blade with painter's tape. This not only protects you from cuts while making the knife, because they are razor sharp out of the box, but it also protects the steel from any nicks, scratches, or glues and epoxies that you will be using to make the handle. I'm using x and painter's tape here, but I've found that the green frog tape from the big box stores has the best edge sealing qualities. I make sure to get that painter's tape as close to the edge of the bolster of the knife as possible in order to prevent any excess epoxy from leaking there. Not a necessary step, but it does extend the life on your sanding rolls later. Then I got to dig through my knife handle toolbox for some beautiful blue stabilized maple burl from Ryan Moeller. Once I get the knife blank and handle oriented how I want it, I trace it with a sharpie so I know where the specific wood features will be, like the eyes and the burl. I just use a Sharpie, it's all gonna get sanded off later and it's easier to see. Once traced, make sure the ends of the scales are flush and square, then wrap the tops and bottom in painter's tape. Uh, this prevents it from moving or wiggling around later. You can cover up the traced handle at this point uh, as long as it's all flush. Um, just center that knife blank over the top and put a quick mark where that mosaic center pin is going to go. When I drill it out, I hold the knife blank on top when doing the first part of the mosaic pinhole. Kind of redundant with the Sharpie dot, but it's just how I do things. Then I take the knife blank off and I finish the hole all the way through. This is a 3 8 inch drill bit for a 3 8 inch pin. Um, it was really tight though, so I needed to widen the hole to persuade that pin to go in uh, smooth. Uh, I tap it in a little bit, but uh, the last thing you wanna do is get to the glue up phase and not be able to get the pins in. Now you can see the mosaic pin sitting flush when I drill out the first eighth inch pin and I'll just stick an old eighth inch drill bit in there to hold that alignment while I drill the second pin. To find the length that these eighth inch pins need to be, I measure the whole length of what will be the knife handle. So the wood and steel together and I use a Sharpie to mark that. Sometimes these are really tight so you'll often need pliers to pull them out as shown. And I thought I filmed cutting these, uh, but I guess I just never hit record. I just use a Dremel with a metal cutoff wheel to make quick work of cutting this eighth inch steel. Here I'm softening the ends that I just cut with the Dremel. This prevents any cuts on my fingers while working with the pins, but it also makes the pins easier to insert in those eighth inch holes without catching anything on the sides. Now for the fun part. I insert the two eighth inch pins to hold the alignment of the scales. I'll retrace the handle contour of the Sharpie before taking it over to the bandsaw. Now this is why I put the pins in before cutting on the bandsaw. As you cut away that painter's tape from earlier, the scales would normally wiggle around, but the pins will hold that alignment perfectly. Uh, with the bandsaw, you get out of this what you put into it. I try to get as close to that line as possible without over sawing. Uh, that'll just minimize your sanding effort later. Uh, you obviously don't want to cut past your line because uh, you can't add material back. So get out of it what you put into it. I use Forge Bond Knife Epoxy from Superclear. Awesome product, but it takes 24 hours to cure, which is longer than the five minute set for JB Weld. Um, but I do have more confidence in the Superclear product. After mixing that for a few minutes, you just, you just apply it like mayo on a sandwich. And actually, I don't like mayo, so I'm not sure if that's a good analogy or not, but that's the first thing that came to mind. I will dip the pins in a little bit of epoxy before inserting them too. I'd rather err on the side of more epoxy than less. Then you just slap the knife blank in the middle and make sure the pins are a little bit proud on both sides before clamping it down. You don't want the pins to be shallower than the wood here. Um, when you're clamping it down, just kind of keep an eye on that. But I use three Bessie clamps per knife, one on the top and bottom pins, and then one over the middle mosaic pin in the opposite orientation as shown.
And if everything looks good, you can close up shop and come back in 24 hours to start your sanding marathon. When you take those clamps off, sometimes the red plastic caps on the clamps stick to the epoxy. Um, I just use some pliers to pull those off. Super easy. Now, if you don't enjoy sanding, the next 60 seconds are definitely not for you. Um, I start by sanding the pins, the metal pins flushed to the wood handle, and then I sand the epoxy clean off the sides before doing any major shaping. Uh, for this part, I stick with a 120 grit sandpaper. I will do a little spinny spin with the handle to get those edges smooth and rounded out to start. Uh, I want that to start feeling more ergonomic. I have sandpaper, I have a sandpaper eraser that extends the life of my sandpaper rolls just by cleaning off some of that um, sanded epoxy and stabilized wood gunk before it hardens on my sandpaper forever. Highly recommend a sandpaper eraser. Here's some more spinny spin action on the front of the handle. Um, obviously the wood does sand faster than the steel, so it's important to keep slight movement while sanding. Um, don't stay in one place too long or you'll end up with a handle that has awkward ridges and divots. Here I'm taking off the tape from the bolster. I use some acetone to help release that adhesive if it's being a little stubborn. If you get any epoxy on the bolster, you can sand it now. I'll use 220 grit belt for this. It cleans up any milling marks that came from Katsura and it also makes it have a good brushed look. With the initial shaping done, it's time to hand sand from 80 grit up to 500. I always retape the bolster at this point so I don't scratch that brushed look we just achieved on the belt sander. If you don't like sanding, the next 60 seconds are not for you. Again, uh, I want a knife that feels good in the hand, and that's what I'm working on here. I start at 80 grit for some heavier shaping, and I move up to 120, 150, 180, 220, 320, 500, and then wet sand at 500. I didn't film all of that. You're welcome. But it is all a very important part of this process. This is just the wet sanding at 500. I really want a clean, smooth finish with no scrapes or scratches on that wood. Now to the fun part. To apply finish, you fold a paper towel hamburger style first and then hot dog style twice. Let's see that again. Hamburger style first, hot dog style, and hot dog style. Apply some mercury adhesives thin flex CA glue to the end of the paper towel and evenly rub it around the handle until it dries. Once dried, simply use scissors to cut off that section of paper towel that had glue on it, like that. Apply some more thin flex CA glue to the new end of that paper towel and continue rubbing on finish. Per folded paper towel, I'll get four coats of glue. After four coats of glue, I'll spray some accelerator on it and let it dry for a few seconds. Once fully dried, I'll wet sand at 500 grit. This ensures a smooth feel and allows for the next round of glue to mechanically bond to the previous coats of glue. Again, I get four coats of finish per paper towel and I use three paper towels total, which is 12 coats of glue for a very durable finish. This stuff does dry fast, so if you feel like the paper towel is catching and sticking, um, just stop. Um, Put some fresh glue on there and start again. Uh, use more than three paper towels if you need to. Um, just get a nice, clean, consistent finish. I did want to give a big shout out to my best bud, Charlie Kohler uh, from Kohler Hardwoods. I'll tag his Instagram in the video description below. He helped me make my first three knives in his workshop. And I honestly just fell in love with this process. He mentored me with both positive and negative reinforcement, leaning more heavily on negative reinforcement but he taught me everything I know about making knives. I definitely would not have gotten this far without his help, his patience, his guidance, and his shop. So I felt like he deserved a heartfelt shout out here. Thanks, Chuckles. Now that all the finish is applied, we can take off that painter's tape and really buff up the finish with these two inch wet sanding mesh pads. These will buff the CA finish as well as the stainless steel bolster. These mesh pads start at 1500 grit and go all the way up to 12,000, which gives a high gloss finish. 
However, I only sand my knives up to 3200 grit, the gray pad, because I don't want a slippery high gloss finish on my knife handles. I want there to be some friction between your hand and the handle um, when you're cutting things. Uh, personal preference, I think the high gloss looks really nice, but I think the more matte lower grit uh, has a little better uh, functionality. I also, you've seen me use this No Cry Gear Garden kneeling pad to buff these on. It's really nice. It's soft. I'm not worried about nicking the finish or ruining it by setting it down too hard on my super, super clean workbench. As you can see, you can use a bar mat or a old yoga mat, carpet squares, anything. Uh, but I really do like this little kneeling pad. Now that that buffing is done, we can take off all the painter's tape and see the final product. Be extra careful with this part. Ironically enough, I've cut myself more while taking the painter's tape off my knives than I ever had using my knives. You can see that beautiful mosaic pin, beautiful wood, smooth finish, and a great shape. It's ready to cut all of your bread. And we're tucking it in, and it's a nice cozy box for client pickup. My sister-in-law, Little Levin, on Instagram has an amazing sourdough line that you can actually order from. Uh, she does local drop-offs in the Jacksonville, Florida area, but will also seal and ship it with reheating instructions to your house, like she did for me in Tennessee. Uh, she has crackers, bagels, um, bread, loaves. It's pretty impressive, and they make for wonderful treats. I ate all of these crackers in about one sitting. Thanks for watching, and I really hope you learned something here. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content. You can really hear how excited I am about how well this bread knife cuts. And a clean cut. I'd love to hear more about your knife making process or answer any additional questions about mine. Please reach out. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. Peace.